Okay, welcome to this lesson on magnetic interactions. Please, please date your work. Uh, let's see, we are up to uh, here, investigating magnetic interactions or magnetic interactions, as I've shortened it down to. Um, so please have a go at, uh, let's see, please have a go at doing the starter here um, by referring to your work from previous lesson. Um, the objectives, I can describe how magnets interact with each other. And here's the starter. This diagram shows half the magnetic field of a bar magnet. Draw carefully in the other half. Well, really what you should be doing here, if you haven't done it already, go back to your work from yesterday, and you can see that a magnetic field is symmetrical. And really you've just been looking at the sort of pattern, should just be replicated onto the other side. And you can see that magnets are always, the magnetic field lines always go from north to south. So just a little quick recap on what we did last lesson. So this lesson is very much a practical lesson. If you weren't, miss, weren't missing last lesson, the, the one that we did on plotting a magnetic field, then you might not have done looked at this video in the lesson because I set this video extra work for people who weren't in the, the lesson. So please go and have a look at this called Veritasium from a, a YouTube channel called Veritasium. Really good, really interesting video. So I'll put that as a link in the video. If you haven't seen it already, please go and have a look at that. And I'll probably cover a lot of the content that we're actually going to do. To some extent, I won't be able to cover all the content in a video because really, Ooh, I want you to do some hands-on work. So if you have got magnets and you can recreate some of these uh, experiments at home, please, please do. If not, I will just go through the work that we did, explain what happens, and you can watch the videos. And then I'll set a little extra work for you at the end. So in class, if you set up a magnet, how can you attract the south pole of the magnet? Uh, with another magnet well to attract the south pole you would need to bring in a north pole because south and north will attract how can you repel the north pole on a suspended magnet with another magnet well to repel the north you need to bring in a another north and this experiment is just for you to be able to see that north's two norths will repel two souths will repel and a north and a south will always attract Okay, an interesting thing to note here is that if you look around the room when you're in the science lab, this is generally what I don't try and do, you will notice that when you just leave all the magnets to just hang and suspended and they're free to move in whatever direction they want, they should all more or less line up in the same direction in the room. And that's because what you've actually made is a, is a compass. And all the north, come to the north-south line that runs through here. So this sort of line here, that line will point toward that line here. That will be the direction of the north pole. Yeah, that will point north, and that will point south. That's only assuming there's no other magnets affecting it. There's no other magnets close by. So. So you can affect that yourself. So that's one way you can actually make a compass. So a, a magnet suspended is in effect just a, a compass. So that was the first experiment we do. Uh, next, I will ask students to uh, see which of these pick up uh, the most magnets. Is there any difference? So I've got a south and a north, south and a north, south and a north, north, south, north, south, north, south. Well, I suppose, well, which of the ones will record the most paper clips? Well, I would imagine the most effective ones, equally effective, would be these ones that I'm going to do here and here. They should be equally as effective, I suppose, because this is putting up, these are both going to attract paper clips. Uh, probably this, the second best is going to be these ones that I'll cover in, in yellow. And that's because one the magnetic field will pass through the nail and nails iron nails are magnetic materials iron nails are magnetic materials and so they paint the magnetic field can pass through here okay okay which of the which of the above pause 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 so in the next uh, little 
classroom activity, I ask people to pick up magnets and investigate which is the most effective one to pick up. And what they will see is that a you can actually, magnetic fields can actually pass through paper. So when we do the experiment, you normally find that this one is equally effective as that one. So what we're demonstrating when I get students to do this experiment is that magnetic fields can pass through paper. And that would probably pick up the most magnets, followed by this one that I will cover in yellow. Yeah. Now yellow is going to be a lot more effective, which is the iron nail is going to be a lot, lot more effective than using a wooden block or sometimes I use a lollipop stick. Okay, I use a lollipop stick. That's probably not going to be effective because that's because the magnetic fields do not travel very well through wooden blocks like this, but they do travel through the iron nail. So the the um, the iron nail allows the uh, magnet, what we call it, the magnetic flux to flow through it. So they're, even though they're not so close to the magnet, they can still pick up the many paper clips. And you will also notice that it doesn't particularly matter whether you've got a north or a south uh, using to pick up the magnets. A magnet can pick up uh, a magnetic material from either side. So there's no repulsion going on here. If you swap the magnets in this situation, you will only get re a attraction. So a north will attract uh, the paper clips and a south will attract the paper clip. And really what I was wanting people just record their observations there because I, I talk about physics is not really handed down from books. Physics is the study of the physical world. So in this experiment, that's what the students will be doing and making their own observations. Hopefully, if you've got magnets, we can then complete this. What does it attract mean when we're talking about magnets? That means coming together. What does repel mean? That means pushing apart. So let's go true or false for the following. Magnet magnets can only attract magnetic materials. What do we think? I would say true. They will have no effect on magnetic materials. Magnet magnets can attract and repel other magnets. True. Magnets can repel non-magnetic materials. Well, that is actually false. Magnets can only... Magnets can repel... That's false. That magnets will have no effect on non-magnetic materials. Magnetism can go through paper. That's true. We can get, we're going to track through paper. We saw that in the experiment. If you didn't see it, it does work. Magnetism can go through iron. That's true. It goes very well through iron. It goes very well through iron. The two ends of a magnet are called east and west poles. No, they're not. As we know, they're called north and south. So that is, whoop, that is false. If you put two north poles together, will they attract or they repel? Two norths will repel. If you put two souths, they will repel. And if you put a north and a south, will they attract or repel? They will attract. Okay. When people do this, I normally let them have a go at doing there. So um, I normally have, let them have a go at doing that one. So just setting it up, and you can see nice. Uh, if you do it nicely enough, you can bring the magnet close enough. You can uh, make the magnetic force equal uh, or even greater than the gravitational force pulling it down. Um, it's a nice one for you to try at home if you've got a magnet. There are eight words connected with magnetism in this word search. See if you can find them, and then I'll show you the answer. Have a go now. Okay, here they are. Magnet, steel, south, north, attract, repel, and pole. And for the life of me, I can't find the eighth one at the moment, so if you can find that, well done to you. Okay, we probably wouldn't be doing this in the lesson, 
but if you turn back a couple of pages you can find in your booklet this this sheet called HA3 what is a magnet so uh, I think if you're working from home and you're not or you're just doing some revision you might want to have a go at doing this as well please so if you could read that sheet and then there's some questions at the bottom and you'd answer that and if you can complete or up to that work then you should be up to date with what we've been doing in class uh, if we have a chance we can go through some of the practicals that you missed and we can show you and get your hands on using the magnets if you've not had the chance to do that at home okay thanks very much for your hard work bye bye